Now let's go back to this. So how can we configure? So remember, Redis is going to be running. It's going to be on this network that is created for all these things. But my server still needs to know where to find the Redis. So we need to set the Redis um, URL in our server environment. And so the way to do this in Docker is you say, I have environment. So under, in notice, indented under that service is we have environment and colon. And then below here, you would say the name of that variable we want to set, which is Redis, and the value we want to give it equals. And for us, it's going to be the name of the service, which is Redis, colon, 6397, I think it is. Okay, so that allow us to now have that environmental variable set. And that is similar to if we had done it in the compose file here, where we have Redis URL just at 63 or 79. Oh, so I need to fix that because I came and look at that. Uh, 63, 79 instead of 97. There we go. And that's it. In terms of listen address, I don't need to change anything there because our server is already going to listen on the default port or, you know, that's where it's listening. Not default, the default, yes, 8080. What about our counter? Our counter also needs to be able to connect our server. So same thing, environment. So we set the environment and we set a name of that thing. So it's API URL and the value is the server. So here we need this API URL to be slash counter and we need this to be slash counter. Run our compose up again and this should again recreate our services. And now if we log, notice how this time everything worked. We can say it says it posted it and we can see that how we got the value, right? And all of this is happening on a private network that we don't have access to. And if this is all the service, all we need for these services to be doing their thing, that's fine. Of course, if we wanted to be able to access our server itself, we would simply configure a port map in here for our server. And we can do that too in Docker Compose. But since I want to keep this video below 10 minutes, I can leave that as a homework exercise for you to do. Just go look at the Docker documentation for Docker Compose, and you'll see how you can expose that port 8080 for the server, map it to your local machine so you can have access to it. Again, you don't need the port exposed for Redis because you will need to use Redis directly. All right, so with that, I hope um, you learned something and you see how really cool um, this Docker Compose is in terms of being able, allowing us to manage multiple services. It brought them up, it knows when to restart them, it created a network for them. Oh, by the way, let me show you that. So if we do cleanup, I'll do Docker network, and I do list. You'll see here is that network that Docker Compose created for just those services, and it tied them to that network. Now, the other thing we can do is we can say Docker Compose, and we can say DOM. And when we say DOM, notice how in reverse order, it removed those services, and then it removed the network. So it's nicely doing cleanup. Now there's one other thing that I don't show you here, and that is there's a dependency between these services, right? We want Redis to start for us before our server starts. And so there's a way to say that oh, our server depends on Redis. And we also want that if Redis is down, somehow our server doesn't start because if we can't start Redis, right? So you can see it depends on and you can put the service name, which you can say is Redis. And we can say that our counter depends on, um, you know, so we can say it depends on. And the service it depends on is the server, right? And so if you do this, now you have this dependency set up. And this depends on the server also. And so Redis is um, Docker con Compose is going to make sure it always starts them in the correct order. And as you can see, if we go back here and clean up and then we do 
Docker Compose of of U minus D, we push in the background. You see, it created a network, it started Redis for us, then it started our server, and then it, it doesn't matter. There's no dependency between these guys, so it can start the polar first and then the counter. It doesn't matter. The order there doesn't matter. But if you want to make sure that the polar starts after the counter, then you can say that the polar also depends on, you know, the counter service starting first. And if you did that, then now you always ensure that I'll say if we do Docker down, let me clean up, and then we do Docker up, you're going to ensure that the network is created, Redis, then the server starts, then the counter, then the polar. And so it's not going to be like before where sometimes the polar could start before. And that's how you express dependency. So there's a lot more to Docker Compose. Because we're just using it as a stepping stone, I don't want to spend more time on it. Okay, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for coming back and subscribing. Thumbs up the video, leave comments, let me know what you think, and see you in the next video. Bye.